Today we're going to talk about fluid boxes not only on your film strip but on the master slide of Adobe Captivate. A couple weeks ago I got a message from Mala. Mala wrote, once again a great video Paul, can fluid boxes be set up in a slide master series with its child layouts? Uh, and will the setup be inherited when a new project is launched from the template? If this inheritance does occur, a video on this would be great. Well, let's take a look at what I do when I create a fluid box responsive design uh, template or theme is probably the better word to use in this particular case. So I'm going to open up my properties inspector here and we're going to jump over to the master slide view. Now this is the rough idea of a theme that I'm currently building on, a, a Captivate theme. And uh, one of the slides that I typically create is sort of just a generic standard content slide. And uh, on the master slide, what I'll typically do is I'll set up my fluid boxes, uh, at least the ones that are going to cover the greatest amount of slides that I might design for. So in this case here, I probably would select a vertical fluid box arrangement. And I might have a placeholder for my title placeholder, a larger area in the middle for, uh, for just general content, and then maybe some uh, space down below for some controls such as navigation. So I'm going to set those up. There'll be three fluid boxes. In Captivate 2017, if you're still using that, you can use these uh, blue selection handles between the fluid boxes to resize them. But a more precise way is to use Captivate 2019 and from the position panel I can simply type in the exact percentage of the slide that I want to reserve for, uh, in this case here, a uh, placeholder for title and down at the bottom here maybe a placeholder for my navigation controls. So let's build sort of the, the elements that I would typically put on my master slide that ultimately will be inherited by my film strip. So maybe the first thing I might need in the title area is a company logo, for example. So we'll go into my media toolbar, select image, and we'll navigate down to where a company logo uh, might exist for this slide here. I'll just use my Captivate teacher logo at the top there. And then I'm also going to uh, place next to it a um, well, let's use the placeholder for title, and we'll place that in there. Now, this is uh, based on an old theme, so I'm going to select this and make some changes. I'm going to change the font, and uh, in fact, the font size as well. And I'm going to choose uh, white just so it contrasts better and matches the logo there. Um, now, the middle content area, I'm not going to worry about that right now. The bottom here is where I'm going to put some navigation controls. And um, at this point here, I'm just going to keep it simple and just use some shapes used as buttons. There are two schools of thought when it comes to putting navigation controls on the master slide. Some people don't do it and they suggest that you should, you know, put those on the film strip view. You'll have greater control of their appearance and when they, sh when they show up on the timeline. Uh, but if you're Designing just a, let's say, a level one, pretty basic e-learning, uh, you know, I think it's fine to put them on the master slide. So in this case here, I'm just going to use the triangle shape. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard, and uh, that way I, I'm ensuring that the dimensions of the shape are the same on all sides. It's square, in other words. And uh, I'm going to rotate this to the left just so that it looks like a direction arrow. I'm going to select use as a button and uh, we'll, we'll do a couple of other things to it of course. Uh, in this case here under actions, the default action is go to next slide uh, anyway. When you place a, a shape used as button on your master slide, you'll see this option that pauses the project until the user clicks. Uh, just as a side note, that pause position is always at the end of the slide. Um, and I'm also going to select a hand cursor just because it gives you another visual uh, cue for desktop view users. But I'm also going to disable the click sound because I just don't like it. Now I'm going to duplicate this again. Um, and for the one uh, version of it that's on the left, 
I'm going to change the action to uh, go to previous slide and everything else will be the same, but I'm going to go to the options tab and rotate this so that it's pointing in the other direction. Now this layout isn't exactly what I had in mind and that's where we're going to work with our fluid boxes a little bit here. And again, if you make these choices on your master slide, if you use this master slide, say dozens and dozens of times, these choices won't need to be made dozens and dozens of times. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my parent fluid box uh, and I'm going to modify the content flow and wrap options. So in this case here, vertical is fine. That's what I chose before, but I'm actually going to squeeze in a column. I want these to stay the way they are. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the wrap percentage. That's going to be more applicable uh, for wrap to next row, but I may use it for uh, optional content, for example. But for right now, I'm just going to leave that alone. Let's look at that title area there. Right off the bat, I'm noticing that my, my company logo, my organizational logo, is too close to the left-hand edge. So I think I'll put a little padding around this here and just to see what that uh, will look like. That, that gives me a little extra space. Probably don't need quite as much, uh, but certainly that's something you can do. You could also squeeze in a row and you could uh, even put space around if you thought that that was beneficial um, for that particular layout. That just gives you a little extra space between the objects here. Let's look at the center content. Um, in this case here, I probably would go vertical and I probably would make the default squeeze in a column, uh, but I'll show you a little bit later on how you can customize that on a slide per slide basis. Now down here at the bottom, we've got our navigation controls. Here's what I typically do. I'll put squeeze in a row and I'll set them up so that there's space around them, so that they're evenly spaced. And when you look at this on a wide variety of different, uh, you know, different ob or different devices, uh, the layout should work nice. One of the things that you might realize that maybe at the top here, I don't have room to have the logo and my title. Uh, so what you might want to do is actually set that logo to be optional so that at a certain point it's going to disappear on smaller devices. And that's of course controlled, uh, if you go to your parent fluid box, this percentage here is when that disappears. So you could lower that if you want it available for, you know, let's say tablets and things like that. But once it reaches that point of 60% of the original desktop view, uh, that object will disappear. So that's fine. So I think I've got a setup that's pretty good. I'm going to exit the master slide at this point here and we'll return to this uh, this film strip view. So now if I want to create the all the elements that are within that master slide, I can insert a new slide from and select it from the choices that are here. In this case here, it's a standard content slide. That's what I called it. And I've got everything I need, including my navigation controls. So I can double click on this placeholder and give this slide a name. So we'll call this slide two content. Now, a couple things I want to point out here. If I click on the center content fluid box, the fluid box selector appears. And you'll notice that if you've been working with fluid boxes for a while now, you'll see the familiar layout. But one of the things that you don't see is you don't see the trash can icon next to each of these fluid boxes. That's because these fluid boxes reside on the master slide. And from the film strip view, you cannot delete them. However, one thing you can do is you can change the content flow and the wrap options, and of course, even the alignment and the padding and so on. So while you have a standard master slide for, let's say, generic content for this course, uh, you can still make modifications to those fluid boxes. In fact, what I can do in this case is I can select this middle content and add some child level, film strip level fluid boxes, if you will. So I'm going to select this here and I'll do something very simple. We'll select uh, two horizontal fluid boxes. And I'm just going to arbitrarily reposition uh, the first fluid box to be a little bit smaller than the second. And uh, let's do a couple of things here. Now, you're going to get the default wrap options here, which is fine. Um, in this case here, 
Uh, this squeeze in a row is going to work, but I think I'm going to change a few things here. I'm going to put a cutout character in this space here and reserve this for some on-screen text. So the cutout character uh, is pretty much an optional thing. So let's make this fluid box optional. And what we'll do is we'll, um, in this case here, I think uh, a horizontal view and squeeze in a row is fine. And we're going to actually align it to um, to the bottom because we don't want the character floating in space. So let's add that cutout character here. We'll use Steve here as an example, and uh, we'll use a high resolution copy of him there. He comes in rather nice. And what's going to happen now, of course, when we get to a size that's too small to include Steve, that fluid box will disappear and all we'll see is the content here. And of course, you know, with these uh, child level film strip level fluid boxes, again, the trash can icons available. You just can't delete the, the fluid boxes that came from the master slide. So you can utilize this approach to designing your e-learning uh, to contribute to the rapid development of e-learning by building a lot of the common elements that are going to be the same across many slides onto the master slide and just making small changes to the film strip level fluid boxes that exist. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.